Imagine you're waxing a car. What is your elbow feeling like? How about your lower back? Uh, you should be picturing the pressure in your elbow from the repetitive motion and your lower back twinging from being bent over unnaturally as you work. Now, imagine if you were doing that for 20 years. What would you feel like then? Ergonomics isn't just a fancy word. It's a strategy to keep you working safely at your job. Industrial ergonomics explains how to design the workplace or jobs to fit your needs. Improper ergonomics increases your exposure to hazards that are known to contribute to musculoskeletal injuries, or MSKs, which affect muscles, tendons, nerves, and blood vessels. Examples of MSK injuries are carpal tunnel syndrome, trigger finger, and rotator cuff injuries. Uh, some job areas that have a high risk of MSK-related injuries are production workers, laborers and freight movers, maintenance and repair workers, warehouse workers, and first responders such as firefighters, EMTs, and police officers. The longevity for people in these careers rely heavily on ergonomic efforts to prevent MSK-related injuries, which commonly end careers early. Now, these measures should be put in place to keep everyone safe both today and in the future. Hazards that can contribute to MSK injuries include lifting heavy items, bending, pushing, and pulling heavy loads, working in awkward body postures, and performing repetitive tasks. Now, the key to ergonomics is analyzing the hazards and customizing solutions to reduce those risks. Now, there are four basic steps to implementing ergonomic practices. Number one, identifying hazards or risk. Number two, provide training on ergonomics. Number three, implement ergonomic solutions. And number four, evaluate progress and encourage early reporting of MSK signs or symptoms. When identifying hazards that could lead to MSK-related injuries, the first stop is reviewing your injury records. Now, OSHA requires all companies with more than 10 people to keep OSHA 300 and 301 logs. The OSHA 300 will include the details of the injuries or illness, and the records should go back at least five years. Now, as an employer, this data can provide patterns of common injuries and how those injuries change or increase with time. Keeping in mind MSK-related injuries are typically not recorded until time has passed, this timeline approach can help diagnose hazards. For example, if you've noticed back injuries in a particular role or shop have increased over the last few years, uh, this requires more investigation. If an incident management system has been used, pulling reports to detail the root causes can narrow down what could be driving the injuries. However, any of the 300 logs will have this information. When a pattern of injuries or risk have been identified, then it's time to take in the environment. Observe workstations and workers to understand how jobs are being done. At this stage, it would be best to interview workers, managers, and members of the safety team to get firsthand information and accounts. Roles that require heavy or repetitive lifting, standing or stooping, and repetitive motions have a high risk for developing MSK symptoms. Now, these actions put an unnatural strain on your body. When identifying actions or job tasks that increase risk for MSK injuries, it's best to be transparent with your supervisor. Industrial ergonomics isn't new, and there are likely existing practices in place. Receiving training to prevent back or shoulder injury is a good example of safety training that practices good ergonomics. Now, while your company may have some best practices in place, your role is critical to uncovering other risk or hazards. It's important to listen to your body while working. That twinge in your back or that pain in your elbow are signs that strain or stress is being put on your body. Designing work to support better ergonomics can greatly reduce these hazards. However, your managers or safety teams cannot fix issues if they don't know they are happening. It's important to bring people together in a meeting to really uncover the issues and how widespread they are. Until the hazards are identified, it'll be difficult to create an ergonomic solution. The saying, work smarter, not harder, is exactly what good ergonomics is all about. Uh, just because you're technically able to lift 50 pounds of product alone doesn't mean you should. 
Safety practices in terms of knowing when to ask for help from another person or employing back injury prevention methods are both examples of industrial ergonomics. It's important to remember the policies and procedures in place around any of the activities we know can lead to MSK injuries. Once all the hazards have been identified by either workers or supervisors, it's time to roll out industrial ergonomics training. Now you'll get a good start here, but you should seek out other opportunities to go deeper into these topics. Now, your company may have resources for this tailored to the specific hazards found within your industry or role. And you can also explore our other training titles. Now, the following are three categories for ergonomic controls or changes that apply in many industrial settings. Engineering controls physically alter a workspace or reduce the impact of the risk on people by assigning a tool or a piece of equipment to complete the work. An example of these controls would be changing the height of a workstation so that a job can be done while seated. Another example would be adding a machine that can lift heavy parts or items. Now, this control is specifically about changing the environment and designing the work area to be efficient and safe. Administrative or role controls are the policies and procedures put into tasks that are known ergonomic hazards. Regarding back injury prevention, a policy that requires two people to lift an object over 50 pounds or to use a specific tool to move loads is an example. For roles that have repetitive motions or job tasks, it would be a good administrative control to cross-train workers so that they can be rotated. Now, this helps avoid strain associated with those tasks over time. Now, understanding how to schedule and allow for breaks is also a practice that allows for rest periods on heavily used joints and muscle groups. Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, is specifically designed to reduce exposure to job hazards. Now, PPE is so common in industrial settings that it may not be recognized as an ergonomic necessity. For jobs that require work with rough or sharp objects, having the correct protective gloves not only protects from an acute injury, but also from harm to your hands over time. Now, anytime working with soldering or welding, having the proper PPE not only protects workers from sparks, but your eyes are also being protected from exposure to bright, harmful light sources. Now, matching the PPE to the needs of a job reduces exposure to hazards and should be used appropriately whenever required. After taking in the information from workers, managers, and your safety team around the hazards, and also providing ergonomic specific training, then it's time to implement solutions. A new policies, procedures, and safety expectations need to be set and followed. All change needs extra support. Managers and safety teams should be fully prepared to correct or further train employees on new ergonomic solutions. Likewise, as employees, you'll want to be sure to ask questions and monitor how these changes are either helping or not helping to reduce the strain on your body. Workplace ergonomics are unique to your body. Well, not everybody has the same height, weight, or other physical characteristics that can be risk factors for ergonomic-related injuries. It's important to continue to monitor how you're feeling or if signs of an MSK-related injury is occurring. Reporting early before it becomes an injury is critical to not only avoiding bodily injury, but also serves as vital information for managers or safety teams. Ergonomic efforts are only effective if there is clear communication. All MSK-related injuries and illnesses are required to be reported per the OSHA Standard 29 CFR Part 1904. As MSK-related injuries could appear several years after exposure to hazards, Encouraging early reporting of symptoms or issues will allow ergonomic solutions to continually adjust to decrease these hazards. Our early reporting will continue to provide employers with the data necessary to evaluate ergonomic efforts and ensure employee safety. Now, this can reduce the severity of or possible disability resulting from MSK-related injuries. An added bonus, this effort to evaluate and improve ergonomic processes can also reduce workers' compensation claims.
Now, while there is no specific standard for ergonomic practices, the record keeping standard and the general duty clause do require all MSK related injuries to be addressed and recorded. Identifying hazards that can put strain on muscles, joints, or bones will help ensure the safety of all employees. Ergonomic best practices like educating on MSK injury prevention training, adjusting workstation design, and providing the proper PPE will reduce employees' exposure to these hazards. Ergonomics isn't just about policies and procedures. It's about ensuring people can have a long, safe career.